Well, maybe we should have split up and looked for help. My sentiments exactly. Well, if it isn't Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Did you get any rest last night? Damn it, Keith. We need food and water. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fresh out of both. I imagine you're jail, Bertie, too. You let us in this car right now, Timmons, and you're going to be looking down the barrel of a very long lawsuit. A very long lawsuit. I, I wonder why I'm not scared. Did you have a wonderful night together? It mean, must have been a lot of fun. Two lawyers alone in the wilderness. Say that song. Lawyers and lust. We have to promise. Never to let that happen again. I can say the words, Julia. I don't know if I can keep the promise. Can you? I have to. You have a wife. And a child. You and I work together. And we have a very beautiful daughter. But the lines have to be drawn and we can't cross them again. Too late, Julia. Any boundaries between us we destroyed last night. We weakened under very extreme circumstances. And it was wonderful. Please stop it. And do what? Your job is sharing cases with me. I think under the circumstances I'm doing exactly what I need to do. We work in the same office, Julia. Well, that doesn't mean that uh, I can't stop us from being isolated working on cases together. And you think that'll solve the problem? What problem? There is no problem. No problem at all. What happened between us the other night will not happen again. I'm not you, Mason. I can't do that. I don't know how to stop thinking about what happened the other night. I can't compartmentalize my mind so that I won't think about it like you can. I can't just see Mason standing there and say, this is Mason, the colleague. I see a man who's standing there who I... This is exactly what I was trying to avoid. But when Samantha was born... And I... The expression on your face when you looked at her... Julia. Let me finish. See? When you were kidnapped and, and missing, I felt like I still had you in this room with me. And I felt close to you. When you were gone, I missed you so much I couldn't stand it. deny that you called Smith to block my transfer? No, I did that. You left me no recourse. What about talking to me? I did that. That's how I knew there was no recourse. I can't even say it. You're in incapable of saying what your feelings really were about me going to Boston and why you did what you did. I won't deny there were underlying motives. You may have cost me my transfer, but I want you to know that you will not be calling the shots in my life. And if you think that you will, you are dead wrong, bucko. I wouldn't dream of trying. At least we've got a little time now. Time for what? Mason, you just don't get this. You don't. All the time in the world isn't going to make a damn bit of difference. Because you and I are in this emotionally destructive limbo that has been going on for months. And that's where I need to get away from. Julie, I came to apologize for blocking your transfer. Apology, Julie, accepted. There's more if you want to hear it. I'm going to continue packing. I can say whatever you want to say because it doesn't change anything. I blocked the transfer because I couldn't stand the thought of you taking Samantha and going to Boston. Well, then, why don't you just let me know when it's convenient for you? Will you stop being so... I can't 
can't stop being flip. Because if I'm not flip, then I'm just going to get upset again, and I'm exhausted from being upset about this, Mason. You try to understand. I do understand. I do. I was doing something that didn't fit into your grand scheme, so you resorted to subterfuge or lying in order to get me to do what you wanted me to do. That's what happened, plain and simple. There's nothing plain and nothing remotely simple about the situation, and you know it. But I have no one but myself to blame for ending up smack in the middle of an emotional nightmare. You think I want the status quo, but you're wrong. This has been very difficult for me to sort out. But time isn't going to make it any easier. And my indecision is unfair to both you and Victoria. That's why I'm going to tell her what happened between us in the mountains, Julie. Are you sure? You're going to be taking a big risk, Mason. And I know you're the kind of man who likes to play a step. I don't think that's fair. I've been confused. I still am. Don't do it. Just let it go. Don't pursue it if you're not sure. I didn't say I wasn't sure. I said I was confused. So I won't let it go, Julia. But I have obligations to Victoria and the baby, and I can't let those go either. Well, then how are you going to resolve it? You have to take some action. I intend to. I have a decision to make, and I'm going to make it. But I have to handle it in such a way that it's best for everybody. And to begin with, I think Victoria's entitled to a full disclosure. Mason, you're treating this like it's some kind of litigation. I'm treating it like it's a difficult emotional decision, which it is. And I want you, Julia. I have for a long time. Are you going to hog the lovely lady all evening? Maybe we ought to get somebody to help you sit down somewhere, huh, Mason? You think? Yeah, Excuse Mr. me, would you hit this man he just insulted? Lionel, no, I, I think you better leave him be. He'll cause a scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit. Samba, Samba, I'd love to. No, forget it. Thank you, lady. Why do you always talk in a hurry and when you get drunk? Some people see pink elephants. I see castles and white horses and you. I'm flattered. Why are you drunk tonight, Mason? You generally think you have a reason. I'm a millionaire. I'm a Libra. What else is you? No, no, no. I'm more so now. And my wife's away. I wonder why. Why? If that was a proposition, and I think that it was, you and I are no longer friends. I'm better now. And it's late. You want to see my bruise? Does it hurt? If I say yes, can I come in? You should go home. I tried that. Mason, you have to try again. There's nobody there. Mason, you can't stay here. I know. Can I just look at your tree? We don't have one. And then I'll go, I promise. Look at my tree, but you have to do it quietly. Will you light it up for me? Very festive here. Don't you think you've had enough festivities to last you for a while? 
Oh, I say yes, but what difference would it make? You're not helpless. You know that? <clears throat> no, but I do a good imitation of it, don't I? I thought this would turn it off, but it didn't. I'm the only drunk insomniac I know. I always find it hard to sleep standing up. I usually recommend a bed. I don't think I can... I don't think I can sleep until I kiss somebody. I can't help you. Still busy with the candy cane concession? Oh, no, I finished that a long time ago. Now I'm going to be interviewing prospective Santa Clauses. Oh, I knew there was a reason there were two guys in red suits waiting in the bar. Yeah, well, excuse me. I better not keep them waiting. I want to go with you. I want to hear you ask the hard questions. I can't believe that somebody that deluded is out roaming the streets. Well, he seemed happy and healthy. And very sweet, don't you think? I, I think he'll make a terrific Santa. How do you know? He may walk in here tomorrow dressed as Napoleon. For once in your life, will you not be the voice of doom? It's Christmas. You're right, it's Christmas. Maybe I should count my blessings. If you can think of that. It would be difficult. One of them's right in front of me. I thought you left. No, I was in the kitchen shamelessly using my family connections. I persuaded the chef to put together a little supper. For whom? Well, I was hoping that you and a certain young lady and I could have sort of a, a picnic. These, um... These are for Samantha. You should have asked me first. I'm asking you now. No, you're not. You put together this picnic basket, and you're expecting me to be so charmed by you that I can't say no. Doesn't Samantha like animal crackers? She loves the animal crackers. And I know that you went to a lot of trouble, but I'm sorry we can't have dinner with you tonight. No, you have plans with somebody else. Why did you lie to me before? I'm not lying to you. We just can't have dinner with you. Well, why? I don't understand. All right. Because Victoria and Chip are gone and you're lonely. And Samantha and I don't want to be your substitute family. That's not fair. Neither of you is a substitute anything. All right, all right, all right. We're not your substitute anything. Well, what are we? Where do we fit in? You can't answer that, can you? Listen, I can't allow you to just walk in and out of our lives whenever it suits you. But fair to us. We're not supposed to want anything. We're not supposed to expect anything. And we're not supposed to commit to anything. We're just supposed to be patient until you come back again. I can't do that anymore. We can't do that anymore. And we don't want to pretend that it's okay anymore. I'm sorry. I suppose his elves came to the rescue. I wouldn't be such a cynic if I were you. You'll get coal in your stockings. When it comes to believing in Santa Claus, Julia, the shoe fits. Mason, can't you feel it? Feel what? Sense of peacefulness. And love. I suppose you didn't hear that either. No, I heard that. There are any number of logical explanations. Not everything in this world is logical, Mason Capwell. I realize that, Julia, but that doesn't... We gotta find Santa Claus. 